around some of our kids who've never heard I love you with someone who would be their best friend. I know full well they're going to get a good education. That's not my prayer tonight, Lord. That is already in place. It's set. They're going to get what they need scholastically. I'm praying that you would fashion in them what it's going to take to be men and women of faith. I ask God... That somehow you would begin to, to fashion friends because I know every single year Cole has gone through school, someone in his class has gone through some sort of life crisis. A parent has died. Parents have lost jobs, things like that, that could absolutely crush a kid. And I'm praying that whenever those crises happen this year, that there would be a support system that these kids would know they're not alone. According to your word, children are one of the few things that is recorded in the Gospels that Jesus got angry at when he saw some sort of abuse or neglect or people trying to push them away. It's my prayer that in a group of adults like this, we would never be found pushing kids away that we would do everything we can to let them see you. Again, I thank you, Father, for this prayer time where we can come together. These are our treasured possessions. We give them to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Has it been a good night? <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, and I'm just grateful because now I'm, I'm reduced to tears and uh, I'm grateful that Bert Spann led the way. Uh, shows folks in my congregation that uh, there's another weeping preacher in this, this county. Uh, thank you, Bert. Hmm. But uh, I want to share from... Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. And if you're sitting here tonight wondering if you've been called, if you've heard the good news of Jesus Christ, if you've heard the gospel, you've been called. Okay? If you've heard the gospel that Jesus Christ died for your sins and conquered death on the third day, then you have been called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Amen, church? And so I just praise God for the evening that we've shared. I praise Him for the prayers that have been offered. Uh, and yeah, the guys that I asked to come pray, they get a little more preachy every year. <laughs> so I've, I've gotten accustomed to that. Preachers are going to preach, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And so, uh, but I want to say a special thank you to Lindsay for all the hard work she did putting all these graphics together. I want to say... Uh, I 
want to say thank you to, uh, first of all, to, Bl to man, dead gum. First of all, to Blondie Church for some time ago stepping out in enough faith to bring Hope Center Ministries to Lewis County. Uh, I've been privileged since, I guess, about January, February of 21 to be a one of their phase one counselors and to be at times a phase two counselor and uh, to be a part of that, that loving and that mentoring process. And uh, it's so good to have uh, the men and the women here from Hope Center Ministries. And, uh, and yeah, uh, one of the guys that uh, <laughs> led us tonight in worship is one of those graduates at any given Sunday we have four, five, six graduates from Hope Center here worshiping with us and I praise God for them and the, the fact that they are not just here but the fact that they have they are taking part in this church family uh, and uh, I am grateful uh, for a community that supports that uh, that yeah there may be some that say not in my backyard but but that is okay because that ignorance can be overcome with love and that ignorance can be overcome by people seeing what a value these men and women bring to this community. And some of them, when they're told that there is a bed open for you in Hohenwald, Tennessee, I know they're thinking, where? Uh, but uh, then, lo and behold, some of them get jobs in this community in places like Summertown Metals and Oliver and other, other companies that uh, support that and give them jobs. And then they're able to keep those jobs if they so choose uh, after they finish the program. And so what a, what a beautiful thing that is. And uh, I say that because this tonight is not the only time that the churches in Lewis County come together. They're coming together the second Monday of every month when we meet together out at Blondie and uh, the Recovery Coalition uh, lifts uh, this community in prayer. Uh, our law enforcement officers, our people, uh, and uh, certainly the men and women who are currently uh, occupying those beds at, at Hope Center. Center. And uh, we have made it a tradition because somebody was asking just today, you know, how long have we been doing this? And, and uh, 2014 was our first year. And, uh, and so it has continually grown. And I praise God that this community continues to support this night. But let's not, this, let's not let this be one night and just, uh, you know, we're coming up on an hour and 15 minutes that we've been together. Let's not let this just be an isolated event that our unity continues that we are a people who will continue to lift up these students teachers parents and support staff in prayer throughout the year that we will be a people that lift our law enforcement officers that lift that lift our, our fellow church bodies up in prayer throughout the year who are teaching people that there is one way to the Almighty Father and that is through Jesus Christ who is the way, the truth, and the life. And let's continue to be people who simply love each other because we know Scripture tells us that love covers a multitude of sins. And so uh, it has become a tradition. One, one thing I can't, I, I can't, I have to mention before uh, we conclude our time. Someone that is very dear to me very dear to this congregation. He's one of our shepherds. His name is Daryl Henson. I don't know how many of you know Daryl, or some of you know him as Ed Henson, but uh, he was diagnosed, it was discovered last week that there's a mass in his abdomen. And there's still a lot of unknowns. And so he will be seeking a surgeon. Uh, I mean, going to meet with a surgeon and see what the, the course of action is going forward. But uh, I believe that God heals. I know you do too. And uh, so if you will, in your own prayer life, if you will lift Daryl Henson up in prayer, uh, we in this body of believers would certainly, certainly appreciate it. I'm going to ask you all to stand right now. And we're going to sing a song that's become a tradition that, that we, we close out with. 
And uh, if Daryl would hear, he would encourage you all to reach across the aisles and hold hands with one another. It begins with our alto, and I don't want to offend anybody, but if, if you're not used to singing four-part harmony, the altos are the ladies with the lower voices. And they're going to lead the way, and then you're going to see the basses come in, and then the tenors will come in, and then uh, our high voice ladies, the sopranos, will then be added, and we're going to sing this. Uh, is going to sing this together, and so uh, let's begin this. Here's your pitch, ladies. Love one another. For love is of God, he who loves is born of God and knows God.